Welcome to a lesson on multiplying radical expressions with variables. We saw in our previous lesson to multiply two radical expressions when the index is the same, in this case n, we multiply the terms outside the radicals together, in this case we'd have p times q, then we multiply the radicands together, which are the terms under the radicals, in this case we'd have u times v, and then we simplify this result if possible. So as an example, when we have variables, if we had the square root of two x times the square root of three x y, because they're both square roots, the indexes are the same, they're both two. In this case, the terms outside the radicals would be ones, so we just multiply the radicands. So we'd multiply two x and three x y under the square root, which would give us two times three, times x times x times y. Notice in this form we can tell we do have a perfect square factor of x squared, so this will simplify. The square root of x squared would simplify to one factor of x, so we're left with x times the square root of six y. Let's take a look at some more examples. Here we have the square root of twenty-one x squared y times square root twenty-eight x y cubed. Again, because the coefficients would be one, we multiply the radicands, which would give us the square root of twenty-one times twenty-eight, times, we'd have x squared times x to the first, that would be x to the third, times y to the first times y to the third, that would be y to the fourth. Now to simplify this, we do want to find the prime factorization of twenty-one times twenty-eight. So we'll find the prime factorization separately and then combine them. So twenty-one is equal to three times seven. Twenty-eight is equal to four times seven and four is equal to two times two. So now we can write this as the square root of, now for this prime factorization, We'll put the terms in order from least to greatest, so we have two times two times three times seven times seven. So two times two times three times seven times seven. Find the prime factorization of these two separately. It saves a little bit of work than having to multiply these together, and then find the prime factorization. And now for x to the third, we can write that as x times x times x and why the fourth would be y times y times y times y. Now what we could do is recognize that x squared is a perfect square factor and write x cubed as x squared times x and because y squared is also a perfect square factor, we could have written this as y squared times y squared. But for this example, we'll leave this expanded and then we'll circle groups of two equal factors since we have a square root. Here's a perfect square factor, here's a perfect square factor, as well as here, here, and here. Everything circled will simplify, so we'll have the square root of two squared is two, the square root of seven squared is seven, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of y squared is y, as well as the square root of this y squared. And then we still have the square root of three x, so this simplifies to fourteen x y squared times the square root of three x. Next we have the cube root of four a squared b squared times the cube root of twelve a b cubed. Again the coefficients are one, so we can just multiply the radicands together. So we'd have the cube root of four times twelve, and then we'd have a to the second times a, that's a to the third, times b to the second times b to the third, that would be b to the fifth. Notice here we have a cube root, so we're looking for groups of three equal factors. Well the prime factorization of four is two times two, the prime factorization of twelve is three times four, and four is equal to two times two. Again, we could have found this product as forty-eight and then found the prime factorization of forty-eight, 
but it's easier to find the prime factorization in this form. So now we have the cube root of, notice how we'd have one, two, three, four factors of two and a factor of three. Now instead of expanding the variables this time, because we have a cube root, we're looking for groups of three equal factors. So a cubed is a perfect cube factor. So I'll go ahead and leave that as a to the third. Then b to the third would also be a perfect cube factor. So let's write b to the fifth as b to the third times b to the second. Now if this is confusing, we can always just expand the variables as we did above here. Now we'll circle groups of three. Here are three twos. Here are three factors of a and three factors of b. So the circled part will simplify. This will simplify to one factor of two. This simplifies to one factor of a, and this simplifies to one factor of b. And we're left with the cube root of six b squared. So we have two ab times the cube root of six b squared. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we have two xy square root eight x cubed y times five square root six xy squared. We begin by multiplying the terms outside the square roots together. So two xy times five, that's ten xy. And then we have the square root of the product of the radicands. So we'd have eight times six. And then we have x to the third times x to the first, that's x to the fourth y to the first times y to the second, that's y to the third. So now we want to simplify this, so we have 10xy times the square root of, I know this is 48, but we want the prime factorization. The prime factorization of eight is two times two times two. The prime factorization of six is two times three. And now for x to the fourth, because we're going to be circling groups of two equal factors, let's write x to the fourth as x to the second times x to the second. And y to the second would also be a perfect square factor. Let's write y to the third as y to the second times y. Again, if we need to, we can just expand these variable factors. Now we'll circle groups of two. Here are two twos, two twos, two factors of x two factors of x and two factors of y. Those are all the perfect square factors that we'll simplify. So we have 10xy times the square root of two squared is two. The square root of two squared is two again. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of x squared is x again. And the square root of y squared is y. And we're left with the square root of three y. So the final result would be 10 times two times two, that's 40. Here we have x times x times x, that's x to the third. Y times y, that's y squared. And we have the square root of three y. I hope you found this helpful.